Hi, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Sampat Jagannathan. I'm the product manager for Revenue Story. And uh, <laughs> yeah, um, so let's get started. Um, uh, we have a good chunk of people who have uh, joined already. Uh, like I said, my name is Sampat. I'm the product manager of uh, Revenue Story. Revenue Story is charge based uh, subscription revenue analytics platform. And uh, in the next 30 to 40 minutes, uh, uh, we'll basically, I'll walk you through the Revenue Story app, uh, the product is capabilities, and uh, help you figure out what's the best way to uh, use the product, um, basically to get the best out of it, right? And uh, quickly on the house rules, like I said, it'll be for about 30 to 40 minutes. Um, we'll try to keep the, uh, the walkthrough to the first 30 minutes so that we have about 10 to 15 minutes for Q&A. And uh, the participants will all be muted. In case you have any questions, you can just go ahead and add it in the questions tab, and we will address all those um, towards, uh, at the end during the Q&A session. And uh, the slides and recordings, we will uh, share the, uh, the recording of the webinar with all the registrants so that you or your team members can look at it um, uh, sometime later as well. All right. Uh, thank you again uh, for joining. I really appreciate it. And like I said, the agenda will be the features and capabilities and uh, uh, some tips on how, can, how we can get the best uh, from Revenue Story and the Q&A session, right? So, so Revenue Story, like I said, uh, is Chashbee's revenue analytics, uh, subscription revenue analytics platform, and it is built on top of the Chashbee data. Right. And uh, one thing that we have realized by talking to uh, a ton of our customers over the last few years is uh, the subscription business is slightly different in the sense there are multiple stakeholders who are typically interested in tracking uh, metrics. And uh, the kind of metrics that they track and their motivations are slightly different. Right? Um, for example, let's say you're talking to an executive in a SaaS business. Um, they're primarily worried about the top line metrics. They're looking at the MRR. They're looking at uh, the MRR growth, um, your pick ratio, and things like that. Whereas when you talk to somebody from the customer success team, uh, they are more concerned about churn and retention, right? Uh, somebody from the marketing team is concerned about acquisition, right? And um, when I say acquisition, they're basically looking at um, uh, the new signups, the new activations, and uh, how many freemium conversions are happening, so on and so forth, right? Uh, somebody from sales cares more about new MRR, right, and new revenue. So uh, typically, the kind of metrics that these people look at and the frequency at which they look at these metrics is very different, right? And what we have tried to do with Revenue Story is uh, try to address all these different uh, use cases and try to cater to all these different stakeholders, right? Obviously, that means that the platform has to be extremely flexible. Um, one size is not going to fit all of them, right? Uh, so as a result, if you look at Revenue Story, it pretty much covers uh, most of these aspects today, like right? MRR analytics, churn analytics, acquisition, retention, plan, revenue leakage, receivables, so on and so forth, right? And uh, obviously, uh, the challenge here with uh, being a flexible platform is at times it might get overwhelming. So we currently have about uh, 80 plus reports uh, in the metrics uh, revenue story metrics gallery. Um, so what we have done uh, to make sure that we, we don't overwhelm users with too many options um, is that we have actually created a bunch of role-based uh, dashboards. Right, uh, which is why uh, most of you would have tried the app at least once, and when you tried it for the first time, uh, you would have been asked to choose a function that you associate yourself with, right? And what the app would do is, based on the function that you choose, it would basically give you a default dashboard that pretty much addresses at least 60 to 70 percent of your metric requirements, right? And uh, uh, the whole dashboard and uh, uh, the layout and the content of the dashboard is completely customizable. So the idea is we give you something which sort of addresses um, a, a significant part of your requirements, and then you can go ahead and customize it the way you want. Right? So with that context, um, let us actually uh, get to the uh, Revenue Story app walkthrough. Right? Uh, give me one second. So uh, for the purpose of this uh, webinar, uh, I have created this uh, executive watch dashboard. Um, so if you look at this particular dashboard, uh, uh, typically in Revenue Story, you see that most of the reports are actually presented either as a KPA or as a chart. 
uh, the charts are typically used for historical trends, right? And uh, the KPIs are typically used to compare uh, the current month or current week or quarter's performance against the previous week or month uh, uh, in, in different scenarios, right? And uh, if you look at the summary metrics here, I have total MRR, right? And uh, I have the total active paid subscriptions, the ARPU, the LTV, and quick ratio. Uh, the quick ratio, the way we calculate is it's basically the, uh, the overall uh, expansion uh, against the overall contraction. And um, the best part about revenue story is when you look at these numbers and you're in case wondering, okay, where did this total MRR come from, 115K total MRR come from? What you can do is you can always click on any one of these uh, uh, metrics and you see that this is basically October numbers compared against September number. And when you click on underlying data, it actually gives you uh, the breakdown of uh, uh, all these uh, different subscriptions which actually contribute um, to that specific MRR number, right? Um, uh, so basically with MRR analytics, you're now looking at the net MRR growth chart. Uh, which basically gives you the breakdown of the different MRR uh, components over the last 12 months, right? And uh, what you can do is when you actually hover on any one of these months, you see that for Jan 2018, you actually have a 1.2K of new MRR. You have about $700, $800 of free to paid conversions and about $800 of downgrade, right? And uh, what you can do is you can actually click on any one of these and it actually tells you that there is this one subscription which actually contributed to that 1.2K of new MRR, right? It also tells you which plan the, uh, the subscription is in currently and who is the customer ID and all the other information. And you can also download this uh, as a CSV if you want to do further analysis on it, right? And, uh, and these uh, metrics which you see here, which is the new MRR, your upgrades, your downgrades, and your churn uh, can be added as KPIs as well. Um, and also as uh, a trend line chart, right? And uh, the next uh, set of metrics I have here are primarily around churn analytics, right? Um, so I see that uh, I have a total subscription churn of 13. Uh, these are basically customer churn, the count churn. And uh, I also have about 1.5K of downgrade MRR and about $800 of uh, cancellation MRR. And uh, in case uh, I need to drill down and figure out where did this 1.5K downgrade MRR came from, I can click on it. And then it basically gives me the list of subscriptions that actually contributed to that uh, 1.5K. So there is one subscription which actually got uh, downgraded by about $1,000. And there are a couple others with about $350 and $150, right? And uh, we also have the net MRR churn rate. and. Uh, net negative churn obviously being something good for the business it's about negative 1.39 percentage uh which means we, we are existing base is still growing right so it's a good thing um what we also have here is the mrr retention cohort and uh, the way um, we define the cohort in revenue story is all the subscriptions that got created in a specific month right for example in this case uh, we are looking at november 2017 and uh, we see that X number of subscriptions got created that month and their initial MRR was around $1,000, right? And what was $1,000 in November 2017 has uh, in the next 12 months um, evolved to around 2.5K, right? It's grown by about 250%, which is great, right? I mean, as a business, if your existing base is growing at this rate, it's phenomenal, right? Uh, but that is one way of looking at this cohort, right? The cohort also lets you explore um, your data in multiple dimensions. Um, for example, let's say I want to analyze what is my typical six month retention look like, right? What I can do is I basically go to the six month, which is April 2018, and then I go diagonally and see that on an average, my six month retention is about 100, 125%, right? The highest one being 250% and the lowest one being 46%. And, and uh, in certain specific cases where uh, let's say uh, you make some key uh, business critical decisions in May 2018 and you want to see how that impacted in June 2018, for example. What you can do is you can actually vertically look at the cohort and see irrespective of when those subscriptions activated, what was the scenario in June 2018? Did, did, uh, uh, did the MRR from the previous uh, month, did that increase or decrease? Right. So they are basically different ways of looking at this cohort and each one of these uh, perspectives gives you a very interesting insight. Right. And uh, what I also have here is total scheduled cancellations and something called the churn breakdown report. 
right? Churn breakdown report is something very interesting. Uh, what it helps you analyze is at what stage is your churn typically happening, right? Is it because is it an early stage churn? Is it mid stage churn or is it late stage churn? Um, for example, um, so the data here is pretty much like evenly distributed, but let's let's assume uh, most of your churn happened uh, in the first thirty days. What that means is um, there is there is a gap between. Uh, what you are communicating about your product, either through your website or brochures or through your salespeople. Um, there is a gap between what is being communicated and what is uh, the actual value being offered by the product, right? So what happens is customers typically sign up, they come in, they try it out for a few days or a few weeks and then realize that they actually don't find the value and then they churn, right? That's a very different scenario when compared to uh, a bunch of customers um, churning after about a couple of years, right? Uh, so they have been with you, they signed up with you, they've been with you for about one to two years and now they are churning, uh, which is a completely different scenario, which is probably a more serious scenario, primarily because their businesses have grown over the last couple of years, whereas your product is not keeping pace with their growth. Right? So what they are doing is they are basically uh, being forced to find an alternative. So and uh, these, these insights are extremely important because the kind of follow-up actions that you take are very different uh, in the early stage churn versus the, versus the late stage churn, right? And uh, what we also have here is a couple of sample reports on plan analytics, right? When I say plan analytics, we basically try to analyze uh, new MRR or your total MRR by uh, the different plans that you have, right? So in this case, I have about six or seven plans and I see that I hover uh, for a specific month and I see how much new MRR came from each of those plans. And what I can also do is I can see if there is a, if there is a pattern. Um, so in this case, I see that the pattern from the plan group men is, is sort of decreasing over a period of time. Uh, and uh, uh, the new MRR from the plan group women is actually increasing over a period of time. So this sort of helps you understand uh, the trend uh, over a period of time. Uh, as to which plan group is actually contributing more to your uh, new uh, new revenue, right? And um, the next one is your total paid active subscriptions at any point in time, which is segmented by the different plan groups, right? And uh, plan movement report is another very interesting uh, uh, report that sort of gives you an insight on if there is any specific pattern in which your customers are moving from one plan to the other, right? Um, let me actually sort it uh, so that I get October 2018 that it's month first. Uh, so in this case, I see that there are about 16 customers who actually moved from the freemium plan to the multi-site plan, right? And about eight of them who moved from premium to the to the launch plan, right? And this report becomes especially useful when there is any major event such as, uh, let's say there is a pricing revamp happening, right? Um, so, what are uh, your customers ha uh, okay uh, with the pricing revamp or uh, the existing customers sort of downgrading to a lower plan because you uh, increase the prices or let's say you launch a major feature in one, any one of the plans uh, so you can sort of use this report to uh, see how much impact is that creating right so if that feature is actually impactful then you would see that a bunch of uh, customers would actually move from a move from a lower plan to the uh, plan in which the new feature was, was launched. So it sort of helps you identify uh, the pattern in different scenarios, right? And uh, uh, the next set of metrics that we are looking at is basically acquisition related metrics, uh, which is your signups and activations and see uh, uh, the trend over the last 12 months as to how your signups have been and how your activations have been. Uh, again, even in this report, you can click on the, uh, uh, the metric and get very contextual underlying data here as well, uh, which can be downloaded later. And uh, what we also here have here is signups by acquisition channel and your ARPU by channel, right? So typically acquisition channel uh, uh, is not a data point that you would, that you would find in uh, a system like a Chashby billing system, right? Uh, so what revenue story lets you do is, uh, even though this data point is not available in charge it is a, it is it is extremely important for marketers to see how um, subscriptions which are actually coming from a specific channel are evolving over a period of time so there is one thing to see how many uh, leads came from a particular channel um, it's a completely different story to basically see how those leads are playing in a longer term right 
Um, so uh, it's it's very important for the marketers to basically look at the subscription metrics through the lens of acquisition channel. Right? So what Revenue Story lets you do is bring in these enrichment attributes, right, and uh, get them into charge. We get them into Revenue Story and analyze your data based on that. So I've added a couple of sample reports here. One is uh, the signups that you get uh, from each channel over the last 12 months, and the other is. Um, the uh, average revenue per subscription from uh, each of these channels. You see that the Kissmetrics blocks basically gives me uh, subscriptions with an ARPO of about $550, whereas DuckDuckGo gives me about uh, $1,000 uh, ARPO subscriptions, right? And uh, it also tells you how many active paid subscriptions are there from each of these uh, different acquisition channels. So, so these are some of the uh, some of the sample reports across uh, different modules. So we basically covered uh, MRR analytics, we have covered churn analytics, and we have covered uh, plan and uh, acquisition analytics, right? And uh, what Revenue Story also lets you do is to be able to segment your customers based on different filter parameters, right? Um, for example, uh, let's say. There was a specific campaign that you did in April 2018 or May 2018, and uh, let's say you acquired about 50 to 100 customers because of that campaign, and you want to look at uh, their specific numbers and see how they've evolved over the last six months, for example. What you can do is you can basically go to uh, the filter section and you can basically choose all the customers' uh, subscriptions that got created between a certain time frame. In this case, let's say it's June 1 to 30, for example, right? And uh, once you do that, you see that the entire dashboard is now reflecting just the subscription, subset of subscriptions that got created during that specific period, right? There are about five of them which are active. Their MRR is about 2.5K and their ARPU is about $480, and you can see how they've grown over the last uh, six to 12 months. So all the uh, the entire dashboard is now restricted to that uh, subset of subscriptions alone, right? And uh, what you can also do is, uh, for example, you can just go ahead and uh, um, just create a segment for subscriptions. Let's say uh, any subscription that has uh, MRR of greater than $1,000 is something which I consider as a high value subscription, right? So what I can do is I can go ahead and apply a filter for this, right? Uh, I can also go ahead and save this as a segment, right? So what I've done is, <coughs> excuse me, what I've done here is I have this all customer segment. I also have these high value subscriptions, right? Which is basically subscriptions which are about $1,000 uh, on MRR basis. So once I do that, the entire dashboard now reflects just my high, just my high value subscriptions alone. I see that they are generating about 20, 21K total MRR, about 12 of them are active and paying, and their ARPO is about 1.75K. And I also see how they're uh, they're evolving over the last 12 months. Right? This is extremely important. And what you can also do is uh, you can actually edit this and make this a default segment, right? And once you do that, every time you come to this particular dashboard, it always opens with the high value subscriptions. So you are basically looking at the set of metrics that you really care about for the segment of subscriptions that you really care about. So that's the, uh, that's the best part about these uh, segmentation attributes, right? And uh, what you can also do is um, there, are, there are multiple ways in which you can segment, like I said, with subscription related uh, data points or it could be something related to products which is their current plan and based on the customers uh, the country their first name last name and what you can also do is uh, uh, create uh, segments based on some of these uh, custom enrichment attributes so acquisition channel is one thing that we saw and there are a, a few other attributes that we support as well right and this is a growing list it just keeps evolving so uh, uh, if anybody has any specific uh, uh, enrichment attribute that you would like to basically be added here, we'll be more than happy to do that. And uh, one last thing which I would like to cover uh, before we actually move on to uh, uh, some of the upcoming releases is uh, the alerts feature, right? So what it's, it's, it's at times hard for us to uh, um, come check the app on a regular basis. Uh, but at the same time, we just want to make sure that, for example, I always want to keep a close eye on my 
uh, high value subscriptions and I just want to make sure that if somebody is turning, I would like to be notified immediately. So what you can do is you can actually go ahead and create an alert. So in this case, what I've done is I've basically created an alert that says notify me when cancellation MRR is greater than $1,000. And this is only for my high value subscription segment. It's not for all the customers. So what it does is it basically helps me uh, keep a tab on this particular segment of customers. And once it crosses the threshold, uh, it sends me an email alert and it also uh, throws me an in-app alert as well. So this uh, helps me stay on top of things even if I'm not able to get to the app. So, so these are basically some of the, uh, the key aspects of Revenue Story. Uh, we've covered uh, some of the key metrics. Um, we've covered how, the, uh, how you can sort of drill down and uh, get to the underlying data and figure out what actually contributed to it. And um, we also um, looked at uh, the cohorts and different ways in which it can be analyzed and about the custom uh, enrichment attributes and how they can add value uh, either as a segmentation parameter or as a report, right? Now, what I would like to quickly cover uh, in the next five minutes is some of the um, uh, upcoming features. So these are the ones uh, which we plan to release uh, uh, by the end of Q4 or by early Q1 2019, right? Um, so yeah, I'm sure you must have noticed most of the reports that we saw uh, uh, till now uh, in the last 20 minutes is all around subscriptions and customers and plans, right? What we are currently working on is to bring in the invoice related information to revenue story as well. What that helps us uh, provide you is uh, a very different set of capabilities. And since you will be able to do receivables analytics, um, you will be able to, for example, see what is your current outstanding and uh, what person, how much of it is overdue. And you'll be able to see the AR aging report and uh, you will also be able to see uh, a quick Dunning summary as to how many uh, invoices are currently in Dunning, how many are exhausted, and how many uh, have been recovered successfully, right? And uh, what uh, you can also do is do revenue analytics, which is your total revenue. Uh, when I say revenue, it's basically this, uh, the sum total of your invoices for that specific period, right? So total revenue over a period of time, how much of it is new revenue, how much of it is recurring and non-recurring, and what's your net revenue, uh, which is net of credit notes and taxes, right? And all the uh, um, different piece of uh, information and, and something very specific to add-ons as well. Uh, and uh, for each add-on, how much revenue have you added over a period of time as well? And another key thing that um, the invoice-related data will help you analyze is, is your leakage, right? Uh, which is primarily around how much credit, how many credit notes do you create, how much were they worth uh, over the, uh, the last few months, and how much revenue did you lose because of the different coupon types? And uh, by each specific coupon ID, how much uh, revenue did you lose? How many times were they redeemed? And how much discount amount was lost, right? So helps you get all these different, um, uh, different metrics and different insights. Um, on top of this, uh, there are a couple other things that we are working on. One uh, is to uh, give you the ability to set goals. Uh, for example, um, let's say you want to set a goal for your new MRR or for your total MRR. Uh, Revenue Story will let you set the goals for the next few months and track your progress against the goals. That's one thing. And uh, we're also working on uh, a forecasting feature, uh, which would basically take uh, your historic data and new statistical models to predict your uh, future MRR uh, for the next few months. So. So these are some of the things that we are working on. Uh, I thought these are some um, really valuable ones. I just want to share it with you. And you can expect these to basically be released, uh, as I said, either towards the end of Q4 or early Q1. Um, I think that said, we have covered uh, most of the key aspects of Revenue Story. And uh, uh, at this point, uh, we'll now uh, move to Q&A. And uh, what I will do is I will actually read through some of the questions which have uh, which have come our way, and um, we will start. Uh, I'll start responding to those uh, questions. Right. Um, so let me read out uh, the question and answer that for you. Uh, the first thing is um, the first question is I'm looking to understand cash flow generated from new business. Uh, this metric would ideally show all the cash that I brought in uh, over a period of time. It will include setup fees, monthly fees collected, annual fees, etc. Is this possible to track? Uh, 
yes, uh, it is possible to track, but not currently. Uh, as I said, we are actually working on the invoice related information. The next thing that we would start in Q4 is to bring in the transaction information as well, right? And uh, once we bring in the can transaction information, you will be able to uh, track the cash flows and uh, you will be able to see the, see the cash flow uh, uh, by different payment methods uh, and uh, different uh, uh, payment uh, gateways. Uh, and with the invoice information, what you would also be able to do is track the overall revenue from different buckets, right? Um, for example, um, what I showed you in um, the revenue, uh, the revenue uh, analytics is basically uh, the total revenue, right? And what we see here is basically the non-recurring revenue, right? And non-recurring revenue basically uh, includes your setup fees, your implementation charges, and uh, uh, the other fees that you collect, right, which are typically non-recurring. So uh, you can either get it in this report, or um, you can also, uh, uh, we also plan to create separate reports for each of those buckets. Uh, so that information is, again, something that you will be able to get once the invoice and transaction information comes in. right? And um, uh, the next question that we have is, can the data be displayed in ARR format and not in the MRR format? Uh, yes, we do have uh, a set of reports uh, for ARR. Let me actually go back to all customers. Um, so when you actually go to uh, add metrics, it basically takes you to our metrics gallery. And you search for ARR. We do have a few ARR reports, right? And uh, the demo system, our uh, live version, has uh, uh, a few more reports uh, on ARR. So you will be able to add it. And obviously, it's not as exhaustive as uh, MRR-related reports. But if there is anything specific that you would like to cover, we will be more than happy to add those reports as well. right? And um, the next question that we have is, uh, can I view uh, uh, MRR reports on a quarterly basis? Can I track that in a quarterly basis? Yes, you can. Uh, like how you showed you, uh, show, how I showed you, in this particular case, we are basically looking at October 2018 MRR, and it's being compared against September 2018 because this is a monthly report. Uh, what you can also do is you can go to Add Metrics and choose uh, any of the report. Let's say Total MRR, for example, right? And let's say you want to, you can actually, you have a couple of options here. You can either choose it as a KPA or as a chart. And once you choose the KPA option, you again have all these different ways in which you can compare it, right? You can choose a daily KPI. Right? Or you can choose a weekly one or monthly one or quarterly one in this specific uh, case. And uh, again, you have a couple of options for quarter as well. Right, You can either choose the current quarter versus the last one, or uh, you can basically do it as the last one versus the one before that. Right, So you have all these different ways in which you can add uh, any specific metric to your dashboard. And uh, even the chart option, again, gives you multiple uh, ways to add a chart, uh, a historic chart to your timeline. One, uh, you can do a daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, or annual charts. Uh, there are different ways in which you can add these metrics, right? And uh, the next question is, um, apart from acquisition channel, uh, what other similar attributes can we add, right? Um, so let me actually go through the uh, other ones, OK? Um, I go to custom. So currently, Revenue Story supports these uh, 12 enrichment attributes, which is acquisition channel, sales agent, uh, your customer type, um, your uh, acquisition cost, your business type, account manager, uh, sales agent, plan group, solution partner, customer success agent, etc. And uh, this is a growing list for us. Um, so as long as uh, the enrichment parameter is something that is generic, which is applicable to most of our customers, we'll be more than uh, happy to add more to this list as well. And um, the next question is, uh, can you break down the features available with uh, premium versus the standard plan? Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, let me, so what? Uh, I'll quickly walk you through some of the premium features. Um, so the standard version of Revenue Story uh, pretty much covers most of the things that I showed you now. Uh, but there are a few features which are uh, part of the premium. Um, so for example, things like um, data enrichment, which I just showed you, 
uh, getting in uh, external enrichment data points into revenue story is something that's available in the premium version. And um, uh, some of the premium reports like churn breakdown, plan movement, uh, your free to paid evolution, uh, net dollar expansion, some of these uh, reports are available only in the premium version. And um, what a revenue story can also do is in case you have multiple sites in Chargebee, um, could be because of the currency reason, could be for taxation purposes or because you have multiple product lines. What revenue story can do is it can actually consolidate uh, data across these multiple different sites and uh, present one consolidated dashboard uh, in one common reporting currency that you choose. So that is again available in the uh, uh, premium version. And uh, what we also do is um, uh, we support custom metrics uh, and features like alerts and uh, um, goal tracking, uh, for example, that I just spoke about. These are available in the, uh, in the premium version. And uh, what we also do is we do support certain custom metrics in the uh, premium version. Um, so when I say custom metrics, uh, could be things like, uh, let me just throw a couple of examples, right? Um, so one of the customers basically um, came to us and said, um, uh, typically when, when, a, when, a, when a subscription uh, downgrades from, let's say, a $100 plan uh, to a $0 plan, that is actually considered as a downgrade because um, the customer is still active in that free plan, right? Uh, so revenue story would typically treat that as a ground downgrade. But in their specific scenario, they said uh, we would rather look at that as a churn and not as a downgrade, right? So we created custom metrics for them to uh, make sure that uh, any downgrade from a paid plan to a $0 plan reflects as churn and not as a downgrade. So these uh, are some of the examples where, uh, uh, where we can actually create some custom metrics. And uh, I think um, I think I've covered most of the uh, uh, the premium features here. Um, let me go to the next question. Um, uh, so I have multiple sites uh, in charge B. How does the consolidation work? I think I just um, uh, spoke about that in the premium features. Uh, so for whatever reason, if you have multiple sites, you can choose one primary site under which you want to group uh, all the other sites and choose one reporting currency. Um, so Revenue Story will uh, take care of currency conversion and everything, and it will basically present one consolidated dashboard uh, uh, in the reporting currency. And uh, uh, is there a way to check uh, the formula for the metrics in Revenue Story? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, so when you click on any one of these KPIs or charts, uh, it basically gives you a one-line description. And when you click on Explore, it takes you to the metrics manual where we talk in detail about uh, the metric itself and how it's measured and how to interpret that number as well. So we have tried to do that for pretty much all the numbers, right? And uh, 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 so this would also be a great place uh, for someone uh, who's not so conversant with the subscription metrics to uh, get an understanding of um, what these metrics actually mean and how to interpret them, right? And um, uh, so, okay. So we just saw one specific dashboard and uh, where do we add the other uh, dashboards for the different roles? Uh, so what we can do is you actually go to the dashboard drop down here and you do explore more from the gallery. And uh, so we have about 10 different default dashboard templates here uh, for executives, marketing, sales, customer success. Um, and we have a couple of time-based boards as well, like monthly and weekly uh, watch. And we also have subscription and churn watch, which are very topic specific boards. It, ha it has everything related to subscription analytics and churn analytics. So all these can be added. All that you have to do is just click on uh, this, um, the plus button there, and then save the dashboard. And uh, it gets added to your list of dashboards. That's all to be done, right? And at any point in time, you can just go ahead and edit it in case you find any of these numbers. Um, uh, it's not useful for you. What you can do is you can just go ahead and delete these numbers. And you can also rearrange these dashboards and save them, right? And uh, So 
So is it possible to see metrics on new subscriptions with the count of add-ons instead of the MRR within a specific month? Uh, unfortunately, no. There is no way to um, uh, look at the count of add-ons in each subscription. Uh, but what you can do is, um, uh, so if it is the the subscription quantity that they, that you want to track, then there is there are uh, we have metrics which basically give you the subscription quantity, which lets you track the quantity. So, for example, if you are uh, a specific business, uh, let's say uh, you are a help desk kind of a software where uh, uh, where your subscription primarily revolves around the number of seats. Uh, or the number of devices, whatever, then we do have ways to track the subscription quantity. Uh, but unfortunately, we do not have a way to track the number of add-ons at this point. Uh, but that's something which uh, we will uh, make a note of and uh, will keep you posted.